check one, check one. Just making sure this uh, this microphone works because it's been a while. It's been like two months. What's going on, dorks? Uh, this is Lucky the Dork Dad, and I'm back finally uh, with the new episode for the new year. Hope everybody had a good holiday, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, and a happy new year. Um, before we get started on this episode, just want to say, just kind of review what happened over the, the holidays uh, here locally. Uh, I sponsored, uh, well, myself uh, and a buddy of mine, Javier, that owns Atomic Toys and More, a small little toy shop, collectible shop here where I live in San Antonio. Um, we got together and we did a little Toys for Tots toy drive. Um, we had a great turnout for uh, kind of a quick notice. Um, lots of friends came to support um, and were able to get uh, fill up a good amount of toys. Got two big boxes of toys, uh, donation boxes to, uh, to deliver for a good cause. So glad we did that. And along with that, everybody that uh, donated uh, went into a raffle to win this sweet uh, Batman statue that I, I gave up out of my personal collection. And just say, I just want to say congratulations to Mr. Chris Rizzo from Invincible Comics and more uh, who won that statue. So congratulations, Chris. Let's see what else. Uh, I also did my own giveaway. Um, Dork Dad's uh, secret Santa sack, if you will. Um, So want to thank everybody who entered that contest and uh, Dork, my secret sec uh, was won by Miss Galactic Impressa on uh, Instagram. So go follow her. Um, she was uh, overwhelmed with joy to receive my sack of goods. So, <laughs> um, congratulations to that. Um, and what else did we do? We did a ROU for those of you who follow the Raw Live Unedited Podcasting Network. Um, we did a little secret Santa there. Uh, I didn't participate. I, I set it up for everybody. But that was a lots of fun. Everybody showing off what they got each other. So, um, so yeah, that's what we did as far as the business-wise here uh, at the Dork Dad Podcast over the holidays. Um, and looking forward to do more giveaways and fundraisers and all that jazz um, within this coming year. Hopefully it's a better year year for everybody so everybody's asking lucky why haven't you not put out an episode in two months and you know what um i don't know you know he's got holidays and um i'm trying not to do solo shows anymore so just trying to get people together to get together to record uh during the holidays maybe a little more difficult you'd think hey we have time off we can do it but you know, people want to spend time with their family, and it's understandable. And and yeah, you know, I, I had some personal things going on um, on on my end too. Had a you know, we got to spend time with the family, of course, like everybody else. And and had a a little humble, I guess, to me. Um, I had a serious dad moment. Yeah, I don't know if I want to share that story yet. Um, it's not really resolved yet but uh you know people that know me um no I'm not like a big talker and you know doing this show doing this podcast it's 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 therapeutic for me you know it's for me a way to express myself to get things out to talk about stuff and um you know I I'm not one to to open up and talk about my personal stuff um normally you know you know it's something i've struggled with a a lot uh most of my life and um i would say that i was an only child even though i have two half sisters and a half brother but i would say most of my childhood was spent by myself because you know i was with my mom and my two half sisters were with my dad i was in texas there in california and even uh, my brother, I mean, my mom didn't have my brother until I was 15. So, we're like, you know, we're 15 years apart. So, 
I would say most of my childhood, I was, I consider myself an only child. But, so, what I'm getting at is, I've always kind of done my own thing, kept to myself, and I never really had to, had to, um, I never felt the need to talk about stuff, I just, I kept it all in, and, and, you know, later in life, as I got older, and uh, become a father, and, you know, more responsibilities, all that stress um, hit me hard at one point, and, you know, I had to start letting people in, talk about, talk about stuff, and, like I said, no matter what you're going through, uh, talk to someone, I mean, talk to, talk to friends, talk to your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, you know, whoever, uh, if you needed to seek, uh, professional help, go see a therapist, uh, I did at one point, just because I was in a really bad place, um, but like I said, this this show has helped me a lot. But my point is, uh, the situation I, I was going through, I didn't really know how to handle. And I really didn't feel I could even go to my inner circle, the people I usually talk to about about stuff, because I felt really weird and I didn't know how to handle the situation. But um, talk to someone, you know, whether you call them, uh, you talk face to face. In this particular uh, case, uh I reached out to someone who, uh, um, that's not in my inner circle, and but I had I had to say something. I had to get it out because it was it was killing me on the inside. I didn't know how to uh, approach it. I was freaking out. But uh, so I think this person knows who they are. Um, so I just want to say thanks to that person. But yeah, reach out to someone. I mean, don't keep stuff bottled up inside because it will kill you. So yeah, I don't I don't know if I'm ready to talk about what happened, but maybe I will at one point in the future cuz I'm still I'm still dealing with it or still figuring it out. But enough of that sorrow stuff. Uh <laughs> let's get on to a new year and let's get things rolling with a new episode. So in this episode, I had the pleasure to talk to a Mr. Christopher Castillo. A uh, fellow Texan, I find these Texans guys, he's not here in town with me, but uh, he is a fellow Texan nonetheless. So Christopher Castillo, um, I found this guy on TikTok and <laughs> I know, you know, what, what are you, 40, 42, 40, how old am I? 43? What is a 43 year old guy doing on TikTok? Um, well, to be honest, you know, my daughter is on TikTok and you know she's always doing these stupid things and like that's all she looks at and so I felt as a parent I needed to get on TikTok and just kind of see what the hell she's looking at making sure there's no weirdos um on there and while I was on there you know myself I just kind of skimmed through and look had videos and this guy popped up he was drawing something i don't even remember what he was drawing at the time when i first saw him and i was like whoa this dude is awesome right and uh he started doing these uh live uh sessions now i don't know how long they've been doing live but uh i think it's a newer thing that tiktok you can go live on there and he's just sitting there talking to people and drawing and like man, this this is a pretty cool dude. He's he's laid back, but he's really a super badass artist. And uh, you know, I was there, and I was like, man, I need to talk to this guy. I need to get him on the show. Uh, so we, you know, played a uh, phone tag a little bit. I say phone tag. People don't people don't know what that is. Um, email tag maybe. So um, he's a busy guy. Um, I was trying to find time and. We finally, finally got together. He did a, uh, he said, yeah, I'll do the show. Uh, just name a place and time. Uh, we, we scheduled the time and that didn't work out, but, but we finally got it. Um, but before, uh, we actually got down to, uh, to record, I did a commission, a piece from him and I'll show it. Um, it's a really badass, uh, uh, Frank Miller style Batman Returns. Um, Dark Knight Returns, sorry. And uh, it's just a badass piece. He drew it. Uh, his daughter helps him out in time. So his daughter did a lot of the uh, 
the the inking on it. Um, it's just a really awesome piece. So I will post that so you guys can see it. And yeah, he he's just really down to earth, uh, very humble kind of guy. <clears throat> that's just a badass artist, and <laughs> it's it's kind of funny because uh, when we're messaging back and forth, like he, uh, it almost seemed like he was a little nervous. He was like, "Man, I just um." Do you think you can send me uh, some questions or what What are you going to ask me? I just want to make sure I have an answer for you. Um, <laughs> and what is funny, because to me, he felt like, I guess he was nervous about it. But when we actually got down to record, I think I said like three words. But uh, <laughs> he was he was really into it. He's he, uh, <laughs> telling stories. This dude has uh, has a lot of cool stuff to talk about. And I might do a follow up show with this guy because he just he was going on and on. And I was like, OK, I need to, to wrap things up. My wife was like, hey, hurry up. Um, you know, we got some things to do. And um, but uh, Christopher Castillo is he's a he's a great guy. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this because, like I said, I think I said three words the whole show. But <laughs> um, he's a very cool guy. And and yeah, that's who's coming up Um, before we get started, though. I just want to say uh, upcoming shows, right? I've been out for a while, so I do have some folks lined up. Um, a couple more artist spotlights. Look forward to that because this is an artist spotlight because Chris is a badass artist. Um, what else? I have uh, I have someone on the cusp. Um, she's already said yes, she will do the show. We just need to find a, a time to do it. Um, but, uh, I guess a little hint right now, this person, uh, she is on TV right now. She is in a show that is going on right now, uh, on Thursday on Fox. If that gives you any hint, um, you'll look up what's going on Thursdays on Fox, but uh, she's on currently on TV. So that's, that is kind of cool. Um, so hopefully that works out. Like I said, she said she's down. We just have to find a date and time to do it. So look out for that. Um, I myself is gonna is will be on another podcast coming up. You can catch me on um, just another Friday night. So those guys over there, Double uh, A and CM Chuck, uh, some more local guys. So I might actually go to their house to, to do this because they, I don't know yet, but because they do their shows like. They do them live. They they record them live, and that's not what I do. But <laughs> um, that's what they do. So I'm gonna do what they do. I'm gonna go over there and record a live show, and that's what they do. So look out for that. Those guys are are lots of fun. If you haven't looked them up before, just another Friday night podcast. Find them everywhere you can find podcasts. And one last thing before we get started. Uh, just remember, as always, this show is represented by ThreeLeggedRabbit.com. That's the number three, LeggedRabbit.com. We can find all of uh, body positive, positive gear, uh, swag, if you call it, uh, or what's the new word that they say nowadays? Uh, check out the drip. Or I don't know. I don't know how to use that word. But... <laughs> Go and check out uh, threeleggedrabbit.com. That's the number three, leggedrabbit.com. Where you can not only find cool shirts and stuff, but you can also find my podcast gear. There's a little section down there, podcast gear. Um, and maybe a secret menu. If you if you search the word bear on threeleggedrabbit.com, you'll find these secret products um, featuring uh, Baba Bear. And if you follow the RLU, you'll know who that is. Um, you can buy chonies, you can buy uh, swimsuits, t-shirts with uh, Baba Bear on there. But uh, <laughs> that's just a fun little fun little thing uh, that that we did together. So check that out. But, okay, let's get started, right? You guys, that's what you guys are waiting for. Enough of the talking. Uh, uh, you won't hear me talk anymore. <laughs> You're going to hear Chris Castillo uh, take over the show. But um, it was a lot of fun and... Let's just do it, all right? All right, this is me, Lucky the Dog Dad, with 
Mr. Christopher Castillo. Yeah, that's no problem. We can do, we can do it like this. Um, that's cool. This is the way I used to do it before. Uh, before, before we went to video. <laughs> yeah, before we went to video, which has not been that long. Um, I just started doing okay. video um, while we're recording, just to oh, oh. kind of get a feel for the other person that's on the other side. But right, right. Uh, right. Not a big deal. So, I will talk to my buddy before. Hold on, real quick. I will talk to my buddy to see because he's the one that built my computer. And he's a, I mean, I'm not kidding. This guy's a genius. And so I haven't had problems, any viruses, anything like this for years. He keeps he keeps everything tip top on this thing, and I use it for business. So it's always it's just one of those sensitive computers where it just if it thinks it doesn't ha- it shouldn't let something in it won't let it in. Yeah. So I'm gonna see if you can bypass that tomorrow. Yeah. So I can do this again probably next week or something. I think Go it, ahead, man. I, I apologize. No, no, no. I think it it's, I think it has something to do with OBS because I tried playing around with OBS to try to do yeah, like, yeah. to try to do like a live um right, right. podcast. And you know, it still confuses me. So um, OBS is cool though. It really yeah. is. <laughs> Cause it you it's really good for Twitch. Uh I usually use about four videos on there so people can actually uh zoom in or or, or watch me because they'll be watching me watching my inks and they'll have a conversation and then they'll be like looking and the the, the other camera will be like looking at the room so it's got different angles so people can you know ask questions and whatnot so it's it's all good but that's the that's the best thing i could use is obs is it's a really secure thing man it's really good yeah let's talk about it. You, you mentioned twitch um i know you're i i first saw you on um on tiktok which i'm i'm still new at i don't i don't know how to use that thing but <laughs> um do you use any other kind of uh social media uh yeah i, I know you're on uh use... i know you're on instagram but do you need i'm on any other videos yeah. no i do a lot of um i do rec- i record my stuff i show it on there there's a lot of i mean tons and tons of pictures um i haven't been on instagram for about i have when i check my messages i just go on there maybe i'm gonna say about within two minutes Uh of the day if i do that and i don't do anything else because i'm just working so much with uh with tiktok now because i'm trying to push that uh uh, it it has grown so massively and they say you've really blown up on tiktok like i said uh, yeah and it was actually it was actually my daughter's fault (laughs) (laughs) Because uh, everybody knows me on on Facebook, and because I'm in, oh God, I think I'm on like 22 comic book groups, just those groups, like you know, like DC, and then there's one for Batman, then there's the Dark Knight group, then there's like Marvel group, then there's the Hulk group, uh-huh. and then, you know that. So it's like uh, it I'm just trying over, to give you an example. It comes overwhelming, right? All these different. Oh yeah, well, yeah, well, that's how I was pushing my stuff. Now I don't have to push it with TikTok because when you do pictures i do like tons of, of pictures so i'm doing okay say like i'm doing a sketch of uh like let's just throw venom out there so i uh-huh. do venom i'm doing the beginning so i got a picture at the very beginning and i used to do videos but the videos nobody really cared too much about them because they were like really short and everything else so right. people like looking at the detail and they don't like pausing anything they just like looking at pictures so i would do like 10 pictures 10 to 15 pictures like stages Mm -hmm. and so i mean they got off on that like it was like it's like the newest thing they said nobody's doing this i said what do you mean everybody's either doing videos or nobody's really showing what they're doing 
And I'm like, uh, well, you know, this is, I thought this is what everybody does. They said, no, everybody just shows one picture and that's it. So that nobody does the stages. Like when you do the beginning or, you know, so I do like from the beginning to the end all the time. And so people really got off on that. It was really taken off. And so I got noticed a lot. And uh, let's see, how, how do I put it? So I started, people say, do you ever do videos? Yeah, I do videos, man. And I've done several videos, you know, uh, what do you call it? Time lapse. And they're like, well, for some odd reason, they liked it at first, but they're like, no, nah, we'd rather watch your pictures. So that's what like 90, 95% of the clients and the people who are wa wanting a commission and stuff, that's what they're really into. They were looking at the... Um, the whole process, right? I, they were looking at the process. They were like, this is, no one's done this. And I go, well, why? I thought that's what, that's what it's about. And they're like, no, no, no. He's just, yours is different. And I'm like, uh, okay. So, so it started getting really noticed. And that's when I was really getting work. But what I'm trying to get at, at the work is like, when you take a picture, then every picture you have to describe. And that's what I usually do. So it's extra work. Right. That makes right. sense. Yeah, I understand. So on TikTok, it's a 60 second video and you can just say something about it, tag everybody on it. So they're looking at pictures as like steps, but everything's you, you're talking about it really quick. Does it yeah. make sense? Yeah, so it's yeah. a whole different ball game. So now I don't have to do that extra typing and work. And what is this about? Why am I inking this? Who is this? Who is it for? That kind of there was so much detail that was going to it. So it was like, you know what? TikTok is just, man, it's nuts, man. It's just, I, I've gotten, <laughs> I went from, oh God, I think I went from like 80% on Facebook, 80% of my work from Facebook, uh -huh. about 20% on Instagram, man, that thing, it dropped to like almost nothing on those because I don't, I haven't shown anything. And so, I mean, the work was steady. It was great. I didn't mind it. I was doing anywhere from about five to 10 a week. Wow. You know, wow. now it's like five or 10 every two days on TikTok. And so that's, do you understand now what I'm getting at? It's yeah, just, absolutely. It's, it just really blew up. And when I first started just a couple of months ago, um, I, I had 157 followers, man. And this went on for a week. Uh -huh. And I'm just sitting there, man. I didn't know what to do. I was like, you know, I, I think I'm just going to go back to Facebook. I think I'm just going to go back to this. I tried it for a week, week and a half. And my daughter says, you're doing something wrong. I said, like, like what? <laughs> and she says, you're just, you, you got to do something where nobody else has done before. And I'm like, I mean, like what? And she goes, well, <laughs> we'll figure it out. We got to figure something out. And so, uh, you know, I just like, I, my buddy calls me up. He goes, what's going on, man? I don't see anybody following you in this, man. Everybody just follows the hell out of you in Instagram and Facebook. And I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know what's going on. I'm not used to it. I don't know how to push this. Right. It's a whole different concept, a whole different social media. And so my daughter sat back. She goes, you know what you need to do, dad? You need to do something. You need to do your, 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 uh, your marker trick. I don't know if you saw that, if you're yeah, watching the, the spinning thing. It's spinning, yeah. yeah. And so I, I used to do that a lot, you know, just mess with it. I, it took practice, man. Yeah. And I said, you know, just show that off and then talk about, you know, something simple and just kind of put that out there. And then your next thing, when people start looking at that, you need to make a, a piece and do a giveaway. And I said, give away? He goes, why would I give it away? He goes, no, 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 you don't understand. Because you can make them like, it only takes like an hour or two to make them. I said, yeah, that's true. And so I, I was back and I'm like, okay, well, what do I do, man? And I said, well, just give one away and tell them, say, for the first 1,000 followers. This became a curse. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, okay, so what do I do? She said, just go ahead and give it away. There's somebody behind you. If they want you want to wave at them, they, let them in. Let them yeah, in. That's my wife. I don't mind. I don't mind. Trust me. I don't mind. No, she, she's heading out. Okay. But um, it's cool, man. I'm not worried. It, it, life is life, and you're at home, so it, it happens, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So um, real quick, I sat back. I did it. You know, I said, screw it. I made a video. Man, it went from 300 followers to like almost 1,200 wow. overnight. Wow. I mean, it was that fast. People were like, what? And so by the time I ended up giving that away, 
we had to locate the person and it took like about six hours to locate this guy say hey you want it and he was just like what no no he was freaking out (laughs) and so everybody i mean i ended up having like oh i didn't because i didn't have any followers i didn't have any so i had to learn how to do a video chat you know because take way different than anything else i've never used my phone for it right so I started learning how to do that. And then people are, and so I started talking and then people are like, Oh my God, you know, you're, you're so, you're so laid back. You're so, you're way different than a lot of these artists. I said, what do you mean? They said, well, a lot of them are, they're jerks, uh, they're jerks and self-centered. Jerks. And I'm like, and I'm like, I, well, I, I shouldn't say that because I know a lot of them who are really cool and they're, and they're beautiful people, man. And, and that's, I really like sticking around to the positive people. I don't like the negativity. I don't. Um, and so, um, I told everybody, I said, look, I did this and this is the reason why and everything else. So that one 20 minute session that I was planning on doing for a live video ended up becoming a five hour video, you know, just chatting with people. And so then it became, people are like, oh my God, oh my God, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you draw? What about the marker? You know, the marker trick, explain that, you know? So I'm like, you know, so I'm just talking, you know, and I'm talking about myself and they're like, a lot of artists don't do this. Nobody has ever given anything away. And I said, oh, I I didn't know that. You know, my daughter, I'm giving my daughter the credit. Yeah. And so they're like, man, your work is beautiful, man. You know, you know, so I started posting stuff. I said, well, what I'm going to go ahead and do is do the 5,000. I mentioned that that night. I said, uh-huh. look, I'm going to go ahead and shoot for 5,000. I'm going to go ahead and do another giveaway because, you know, I really need, I really want the work here. I really want to try this out. I really, I, I want to try TikTok. It's new, that kind of thing. It's new to me. Everybody's my friends and everybody else has been trying to get me on TikTok for the last year and a half. I just never did it. And so again, overnight man it was a big thing i ended up i was expecting the next day i was like ah oh, man i'll probably end up with about you know two thousand people man <laughs> i was up to like 5400 man i'm like, like what the what hell the, what happened? So i had to make another piece so i said okay i'm going to go ahead so this guy contacts me he says look i saw a piece that you already had can i get that i said well that one's just that was just a sketch it's it's not like a major no you don't understand i love that well, you know, because I, I want that piece. I said, okay. So I did that. And then that evening, I ended up telling people again, I was on live and I said, look, I'm going to go ahead and shoot for 7,500. And I'm going to go ahead and do three pieces when I get around to it. And probably by the time I get to the 10,000 mark, I'm going to do another three pieces. <laughs> and then once I'm doing that, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give those away because right. now I got some other followers. I opened my damn big mouth, man. <laughs> and I woke up the next day, man. It was at 13 something, 13,000. Like, and I'm oh, like, shit. oh, man, I didn't even do them. So I started working. I started, you know, making these. And I said, you know, I, I there's no way because I had so much work already coming in. Right. So I was like, man, oh, God, I, I opened my big mouth. So, um, I had, I said, look, I'm going to go ahead and save these because there's no way I'm going to be able to get these done. So I'm going to go ahead and hold these off until I've reached the 25,000 mark. I hope I don't get cursed on this because I don't (laughs) want to reach that that fast. And so I didn't really push it. I had other videos and I was starting to, uh, trying to mark myself up, uh, trying to put my name in in the bag here on TikTok. I was getting so many emails because I told everybody how to contact me and this and that. So I, my, my, the, the, it just like overnight, man, it was like a huge, huge thing. So everybody's like, you haven't been making a lot of videos. They would leave messages and talk to me. I'm like, I don't have time. You know, I got to work, you know, and it's just <laughs> it's been massive. Yeah. And so uh last the the day before yesterday uh yeah the day before yesterday 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 afternoon i actually made a video and i ended up having these pictures and i said look i got these nine pictures that i have i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them because i really wanted to slow down so i can catch up and i will make another six pieces for the twenty five thousand mark but if i because i'm expanding my room And uh, I use this, I mean, I got so much stuff in here, so many boxes and so many things that I'm getting because there's so much work. I'm buying tubes and tubes and tubes of shipping tubes, you know? Yeah. So there's so much supplies in my room and I don't have the space. 
and I don't want to step on it. And I have in the other room, which is one of the big drawers where you put your paper in, mm -hmm. um, the big, large, uh, four feet by three and a half feet wide, where you put your like drafting papers and stuff. Right, right. You know, so I got a five drawer thing, and those are loaded with a lot of my papers that I use to draw, and not even that, the huge, large tablets, which are the the Bristol, the Canson paper, you know, the 19 by 24, the 18 by 24. And then I have a 36 by uh, a 36 by 20. Wow. And, you know, so I size those up oh. and those are special. Those are special papers. And so uh, so I have no space to put these these extra pieces that I made for the twenty five thousand. If that makes sense, because yes. if I put them in there, they're going to every time I open it, they're going to shake around. Something's going to land them, scrape them up. So I said, look, I'm just going to go ahead and sell these. And I went ahead and told people they looked me up last night. They bought them all up. They're wow. like, I want it. I want it. And so I sold them dirt cheap, you know, 100 bucks each. And, you know, everybody just started eating it up. I came back on here a lot. Uh, I went to bed early last night. Uh, I never do that. I usually go to bed around two, three o'clock in the evening. So I was, I was already exhausted from a lot of work that I've been doing. And we'll get into the other job that I do. Cause I, I collect bodies. I mean, <laughs> I know that wow. sounds kind of bad. Wow. I don't collect them. I have to go pick them up because I work, I help a friend of mine who owns a funeral home. And so his father oh. is not doing too well. So I go help him pick them up in the surrounding States. People who are from in this area, who wanted to get buried here? I have to go pick them up, so I do I a lot of traveling. I didn't want. Yeah, to, yeah, uh, that's why I was like today when I told you I was in, in Dallas. Yeah, I don't okay. want to sound uh, uh, awkward at the time, but I, you know, when we tried to meet up before, you said, "Oh, I had to go uh, out of town to pick up a body," and I'm like, "Okay, what does that mean?" It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, I'm a serial killer, man. I have to go, uh, you know, go, make sure he's but, uh, he's, he's under. But no, I was like, it was oh, it's, you things. know, and it was funny because a lot of my family members did not know. My mom was like, "What? Are you? <laughs> are you being serious? I said, yeah, I, didn't I tell you?" And they're like, "No," because I've been doing it for almost like going on five years, and nobody knew. And I just, I just didn't think about it. You know, it's like, didn't anybody mention that? And my sister, just last week, just you know, she didn't even know I used to drive a train. I drove a train for nineteen years. Wow. And I said, didn't you? And she goes, no, when you, when did you, you liar? And I, said, I started showing her pictures. She goes, oh my God, you, and I said, I said, well, it's just something you don't talk about. You know, nobody talks about work. How are you, yeah. you know, what's going on with the kids? You know, we've never talked about work. So it's funny. My brother in Denmark, he was like, he knew about it. And I was, I thought maybe he told people, and I didn't, you know, it's like, <laughs> you don't think about stuff like that, you know? But to make a, a long story short, it was one of those things where um, I, I got up, I went to bed last night, and um, I was exhausted. And I sent this piece that I did a man thing, which is the, the Marvel comic man thing, right. the, the, the character, not Swamp Thing from DC, but it's the Marvel version, which is uh, the man thing. So uh, one of my artist friends, a really close friend of mine, uh, he works for Topps uh, Cards. He does a lot of Star Wars. He does a lot of a lot of drawings for the cards there. So he sells that. His name's Kevin West. Really good, awesome dude. Wonderful dude. So I uh, during the Christmas holidays, I sent him the deal, and it never went through. So here he is. He calls me up. <laughs> 1 30 in the morning he calls me up while well, he messages me and i'm dead asleep and he's, like, <laughs> and he's like hey where's my drawings where's this where's that you know he's just messing with me right so i'm looking at it i don't have my glasses on i'm trying to like so i thought it was my buddy of mine that's here locally i thought he was it was my friend sean which he always messes with me he's the guy that got me started we'll talk about him if you want to because it's a pretty interesting story you you i think everybody digs it i don't know why but they just dig that story <laughs> but anyways um so I thought it was Sean. I'm like, and so I'm texting back. What are you What are you talking about, Mel? And he goes, Dude, you know, get your butt up, man. Well, you know, were you asleep? And I'm like, and I messaged. Him. I said, Can I call you? And he's like, Sure. So I call him up. I said, What do you What do you want? He's who is this? This Ke he goes, It's me, Kevin, man. I said, what <laughs> What are you doing, man? He goes, He goes, Oh, were you really asleep? I'm like, Yeah, because I usually stay up until about two or three in the morning. Like I said, you know, right. I work. 
And he goes, oh, man, I'm bad, dude. He goes, I know you've been going through a lot of things. And, you know, you've been saying you've been trying to get sleep because because work has really been hitting me. And I'm like, um, no, man, it's all good, man. He goes, so uh, I, I apologize, man. I just I was just messing with you, man. You know, I was just going to talk about the, that it never came through. I need to know what. Yeah. I say it's cool, man. So, you know, I lost because I've been telling everybody I've been losing sleep and I've been trying to get some sleep. So here he is. I'm in a dead sleep. I've already had sleeping pills and I'm still, and now I'm awake. Okay. So we're talking for a little bit and I said, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this one job that I was doing live last night. Somebody wanted it, which was, uh, what, what did I ship out? It was, um, it was a joker. Somebody did a, uh, one of the other artists was doing on TikTok was doing a competition saying, Hey, you artists out there, you let's do this. If y'all could do this, y'all, y'all show it off. And I'm like, okay, I'll do mine live. <laughs> yeah, I'm and so uh, I was doing, and that's what everybody was like. I want that. I want that picture. Can you sell it? No. Well, it's just, it's just something to show off. It's not like I'm trying to sell it. And everybody says, so are you selling this? Are you selling that? So that's that more. I got back on live at one this morning and I told Kevin, I'm just going to go ahead and live. So he met, he messed with me for like about four hours. Cause he <laughs> likes, you know, we're, we're, we're nighttime people. We, we work at night where nobody uh-huh. bothers you that much. Uh, so you concentrate and do your work. And so man, people were just coming on and on and on just asking. And they were just like, I want that. Do you have any more stuff for sale? Do you have anything to show? And I'm like, no, I really don't. Everything that you see is gone. It's commissioned. And they're like, and a lot of them who are confused are like, so you just don't draw in here? I said, well, yeah, I do, but it's commissioned. Okay, kind of explain commission. I said, commission. It's like, you know, people ask for it. It's a job. It's, you know, it's it's like a, it's like a, you know, a seal deal. You know, they want it. They, you know, it's, yeah. it's something that you, 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 you do a deal for. So they're, oh, okay, so how do I do that? How do I contact? So all this, man, I'm over here like, still trying to get some sleep so until about 8 30 this morning man it was just a mess because i was up and you know ended up getting more work and it's just like i said it became a curse my daughter cursed me with this tiktok well, thing. It, I, I would say it's a good curse to have you know well yeah but when you got uh man it's it's a mess it it just became a mess but man, ask me some personal things. I don't want to talk. About, <laughs> uh, I don't want to just talk about this. I mean, I, I want to talk about what you want to know about me. How's that? You know, that yeah, way no, I can I, just go ahead. I, I was enjoying the story, man. I was enjoying the story. Okay. But, well, uh, so Christopher Castillo, right? You go by Chris yes, or sir. just Chris? You can call me Susan if you like, man. I don't care. Susan. It's just a name. It's just right. Susan. <laughs> no, I like that. It's, but it's just, you know, it's just my name, Christopher. My wife calls me, uh, you know. My nickname is uh, Wolfie. She's called me that since almost Wolfie. a month after we met. You know, she's that's been my nickname. So everybody that, assumes that's my name, Wolf. And I'm like, no, that's just my nickname. That's why uh, Wolf, your tag is Wolf, uh, US Wolf US. Is Wolf, like Wolfie, short for Wolfie. Yeah. And uh, she just always called me Wolfie. She just said Wolfie. You know, it's just my nickname. And she's the only one that calls me that. Um, so everybody goes, calls me Wolf. And I'm like, why are you calling Oh, because I put my name up there, Wolf US. That's actually my, that's actually my email, you know, right. uh, which is Wolf US eight 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 at gmail dot com. So that was everybody just assumes that's what I go by. I'm like, no, I actually I go by Christopher. You know, I don't <laughs> mind, but it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. You know, it's a catchy name, and people look at it, and it just it's better that people see that yeah. Wolf is eight eight eight. So I don't have to explain. Hey, well, if you try this, I'll just sit there and point at it. If you go to here, this is how you can contact me. Just use at, at gmail dot com. Add that to it, and that's how you find me. So uh, it, it's been that's been a blessing because that's the smart way to do it. You know, you don't have to sit there and, yeah. and just write it down, and look and go, oh, man, what did he say? What was he saying? Just look at my username and just add at Gmail dot com. It's that simple. Yeah, that's so amazing. that's why it's been so busy. Um, Everybody has to man, have an alias. What's yeah. That? Yeah. I, Christopher, is, you yeah. know, you can call Chris, me Christopher, man. Chris, fellow Texan, right? I mean, I'm in San Antonio. Yeah, right? yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're in San Antonio. Yes, yes. Sir. yes I'm here in Abilene. Uh, I'm originally from Dallas. Uh, I grew up in this area because uh, my dad ended up re- retiring here. And well, he started working in the oil field, but he was he was uh, what do you call it? The push the pushers. 
So he was a, a tool pusher. He was actually the, the one of the bosses. So he's was going location to location, just checking up on stuff. And so he did that for the longest time. And so um, I, I ended up meeting a lot of people in this area. And so I still have friends in Dallas and everything oh. else. But my main friends are in this town here, which I ended up coming back because my wife, uh, when she ended up getting her job, her uh, she works for the military. So it's really... Um, it's it's been a blessing because when I was driving a train, I didn't know if I could just continue to. It was just so freaking boring, man. It's just the you. world's most boringest job. Everybody thinks it's amazing. Oh, you drive a train? Oh, you don't want to do it. <laughs> you don't. Being You're a, just sitting there, you know. A being a Texan, are you a Dallas Cowboy fan? Uh, I'm kind of a, a retard. They call me because I I don't know why I ended up liking Green Bay when I was a kid. I don't oh know my goodness! Hey, hey, don't get me wrong. Oh my I goodness! For the Cowboys, I was there. No. I was, you know, love them. I'm not I a cowboy. Them. I'm not a cowboy fan either. Um, I'm a Bears fan, and I'm you just broke yeah. my heart hey, telling hey, me Green hey, Bay. Hey, <laughs> no, ah, uh, my wife's friend's a Bears fan, and so we were kind of rooting for them too. So I'm, yeah. And there's a good story about that one because I ended up when I went to Niagara Falls back in 2015, man, I met a, a Bears fan and my God. We're everywhere. He almost tore my head off once he found <laughs> out where, who I like. And he was a nice guy. And he was just up there when I was, uh, we went back in 2005, back in August of 2015, I'm sorry. We went up there to go to just, just to get away. And uh, we were living in Virginia at the time. So we went upstate, and uh, and just just a quick little short story because you're a Bears fan. This is kind of funny. Right. I just wanted, I just couldn't believe how the hatred is, man. I was just oh. like, dude, I'm just a, I'm just here. I'm just here looking <laughs> at Niagara Falls. So yeah. I went out in the morning because we were doing the whole thing that the first day, and uh, I got up early in the morning about six thirty, seven. And I just started walking around the falls, and we were just a block away, and I noticed this guy was walking around with his daughter. And she, he was dropping her off. I ended up finding out he was dropping her off so she can go to, to college. Uh -huh. she, was, she was being dropped off there. And he came all the way from Chicago. So I sat there and they were trying to take pictures together, doing selfies. And it, it wasn't working. So I said, hey, you know, if you don't mind, you want me to take pictures, I'll do it for you. He goes, yeah, yeah. You know, so we're talking <laughs> a little bit. He had a bear's hat on and stuff like that. And he was just really business-like guy, a little, little stocky little guy, you know, uh, older man. And uh, – so we start talking a bit, and, and uh, he said, "He goes, hey, so, uh, so who's your who's your favorite team, man?" I said, <laughs> and I said, uh, "I said, oh man, Green Bay." He just looked at me, picked up his phone, <laughs> way, and I just and I'm like, uh, and I said, "Dude, hey, I apologize. Look, I'm from <laughs> Texas, man, and yeah. I, look, that's what I always liked." And he goes, "No disrespect, I know what the quarrel is with you guys, but you know, it's just a game." Yeah. He looked at me. He goes, no, it's not just a game. I said, well, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm not in that quarrel thing, man. I love football. <laughs> yeah, that's I love point. a lot of teams, man. I'm just a Green Bay fan because I've always been that way since I was a kid. Yeah. I said, I'm not in your little dispute. I know about it. I know the rivalry. <laughs> he just looked at me for a little yeah. bit, kind of shook his head, and he just said, look, look, I, yeah, I'm a, I apologize, man. I said, look, I'm from Texas. I'm not from Wisconsin. But it's just, I've always been a fan of theirs, you know? I like the Bears. I like, you know, and he just kind of looked at me. He goes, oh, okay, uh, you know, but it was just like, <laughs> it was just the weirdest thing. He just like, he's just like picking up, like, like uh, picking up your bill at the restaurant, just walking away, paying it and get the hell for me. It's like, hey, what the hell? What did I say, man? It's it's a big and deal. It's a big deal to say. Sir? And said, it's a big deal to some of us, but. Uh, oh, yeah. That, that's he funny. took it really bad, man. I'm like, dude, you know, so I shook his hand. I said, look, man, I was just here. I just I just came here to, to see Niagara Falls. I didn't come here to start a fight with you, man. He goes, no. He goes, I apologize, man. I go, I go, I don't know you from squat and you hate me just because I said Kareem. But hey, I said, dude, man, you could be one of the nicest dudes. I could be one of the nicest dudes. And you already hate me. You already thought about that you hate me because of a team. You know, and That's he funny. goes, yeah, he goes, I apologize, man. I said, yeah, you know, 
just just take care and that kind of stuff. And I'm glad I met you. And I'm I'm glad that you know I got, I'm pretty sure he went home and destroyed those pictures. So we <laughs> made them. Screw that. You know? Sanitized his phone, wipe it all down. Yeah, man, it, was just, phone. it was just one of those wow moments, man. <laughs> So, Green Bay fan uh, from Texas. Yeah. Yeah. The, I'm a Green Bay fan. I've always been. Uh, I don't know why. My dad disowns me, he says. <laughs> uh, he's a remarkable man. I love my dad. Oh. He's he, There's a lot to talk about him if you ever want to talk about him because he's a lot of people don't know what he has as in like all the Spider-Man books and people are like, you're a lion. So you, I don't have him. I sh- why should I lie? He's the one that has him. <laughs> I'm just letting you know what he has. But um, so no, I don't, uh, I don't know. Ask if away, man. I don't know if it's Texan that maybe because uh, I'm from Texas. I don't know how the, all these algorithms work. You know, on these on TikTok and all that, you click on one thing and then you start uh-huh. seeing a bunch of stuff on your for right, you right. page. Um, but uh-huh. I did get caught in. Um, like all those other thousands of followers when you started doing your your live things and you know, and I think it's just. People are just drawn to that. They like to see the process. Um, they get excited about um, original artwork, I think, because you can buy prints all day long anywhere. Yeah. But having something original, something that, that someone that, actually yeah. drew and yeah. see it done. That's what they dig. They, it's, they love that. It's, it's really they awesome. And I like the – I know on one of your lives you talked about um, – uh, someone requested, could they have the marker that you used? Oh yeah. They started asking for that. Now they're like, yeah. you know, you know, and, and this, okay. <laughs> that was the craziest thing. Cause no one's ever asked for that. And I said, yeah, sure, man. I could do that, man. I could, will you promise to sit? I said, yeah. Right after that, I was on a live thing uh-huh. and a guy sits there and he goes, oh, can I get a signature from you? I'm like, uh, yeah. He goes, uh, <laughs> so you want me to draw a picture or something? He goes, no, no, no. Just sit on a piece of paper and, and I'll pay for it. And everything. I'm like, well, why would you want my signature? Are you going to use it for checks or something? Because I don't use <laughs> checks. And he goes, no, 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 man. I just want your signature, man. How much How much can I pay for it? I'm like, are you, you're serious. And he goes, no, man, I'm serious. I love your art, man. I've been watching you, man. You're just like, I'm like, and I thought he was, you know, I thought it was a different, it's the world, it's weird. TikTok yeah. is strange, man. People were sending me money. He's one to get like, ahead. He want, he's one to get ahead, you know. Once you make it big and yeah. famous, you know. Yeah, because like I well, have this autograph. But I've already did. I've done over forty three hundred uh, wow. sketches in the last nine years when I started. You wow. know, and there's a lot of people on TikTok think I'm this just this new person who just started work. I said, no, man, I've been doing this for nine years. Uh, a friend of mine who got me started, which is my buddy who I thought was uh, messaging me last night, which is always screwing with me. And he's a great, great guy. I love him to death. I, we have lunch. We just had lunch uh, Monday, and we just had lunch today. And we'll probably have lunch tomorrow. We always do lunch. We do it about three times a week. And, and uh, uh, Did you always know you can draw or... I mean, before, yeah, I mean, before well, this whole nine years, right? Um, yeah, well, the, 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 if you want me to go back to the little story, because this is the one everybody, I don't know why they get a kick out of it. It's just, you know, I'm just going to yeah. let you know. I guess, I guess when did you realize you, you could draw and you were good at it? Uh, when I was five, um, I was always going to my, you know, during the summertime when my mom was working and stuff, I'd go to my aunt's house and she was a really good, good lady. And, um, is it? I was sitting, and I was. Go ahead, sir. I was just go gonna ahead. say. Uh, no, you can finish your story, but I just want to say, you know, did it come natural? I natural, mean, yeah, natural. It's natural, I, natural. It's just simple. It was like uh, okay, like when you draw on Bugs Bunny, everybody thought uh, I was drawing Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, you know, stuff like that, because that's uh-huh. the cartoons I would read. Oh yeah, the and greats, so the I have to look at it and go, where are you tracing this from? And I didn't even know the word tracing. What, uh-huh. what are you talking? About? And she's like, you know, are you got a coloring book in here? I said, coloring book? What do you mean? Because I was just drawing stuff that was in my head. Uh-huh. He goes, so you're doing this really good. He goes, so where are you tracing this from? I didn't understand the word tracing. What are you talking about? <laughs> and so I always, I didn't ever mess with pencils because I didn't like the feeling that it would leave like, uh, you would get the, what do you call it? Uh, 
Because I get it would rub graphite. off. I didn't like yeah. the graphite on my. I didn't like the stuff on my hands. I just uh-huh. didn't like stuff. I always kept my hands clean. So I used pens a lot, and uh, I learned how to do pens. And so that was just my thing. It was just I just drew them. And so uh, that kind of really that that's when I really found out that when I actually turned seven years old, when I was about seven, man, I was drawing really good. I was doing stuff that were comic books and people thought I was actually tracing. I was going, I just saw pictures that I enjoyed and that's what I was doing. And so I have a, what do you call it? Photogenic memory. I have somewhat of a photogenic memory. We'll talk about that later too, (laughs) if you know, in another set, but you know, so I want you to take notes so you can remember and you can ask me these questions later if you want to do another setting. Um, but it was, and I wasn't trying to be conceited or self-centered about this because I didn't, you know, I was just, yeah, I could draw, you know, it was one of those things. And, and people are like, for your age, that's impossible. You're doing stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. So I was like, whoa, what? You know, I'm not supposed to do this, but it wasn't really that way. They were just trying to tell me that it's impossible. How are you doing this? I said, I don't know. So I was like, kind of like a little prodigy. It's, um, it's definitely sure. a, a skill that people would love to have. I mean, you know, yeah, I know, I know people say it all the like time. It, yeah. People say it all the time. It's oh, I curse. wish I, I wish curse. I can do that. <laughs> you know, people say all the time, I wish I can do that. I can't draw. Um, do you think, I mean, I don't know if you had any professional or actually art classes teach you a little no, more. I was kicked out of an art class. Actually, and I, we can get into that one too. <laughs> uh, I was in seventh grade when I was in my first when I, uh, and, and um, they recommend me go into art because I would, I would be in class. This I'm, let me get kind of to the little story and we'll kind of get into that too. All right. When my buddy was sitting back, the one that was talking about Sean, he's the one that actually got me involved. And he says, dude, dude, you need to draw, you need to retire, you need to retire and get into drawing. And I was just like, and I was always in that fear of everybody's always talking about um, you're, you're, they're starving artists out there, right? you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, it's now scary. I figured it out. And the reason why they're starving artists is because they charge up the butt and they charge too much and i'm like and you shouldn't do that and they were like and so when i was starting to join well i uh, still i want you to get back before i get into this because it all centers into it all comes back to everything i'm about to discuss so please forgive me go ahead i don't want you i don't want to burn your ears i don't want you to no man i just want you because i don't really talk i really don't talk about myself dude and i'm really uh that's what this is i try to stay private i try to stay private uh, I do, but, um, but people like to hear it, man. They're, they're always like infatuated. Like, how did you start? Wow. That's, that's amazing. So when I was in class back in the sixth grade, well, I, I had ADHD, so nobody really knew what that was. Nobody, right. they didn't even have a word for it at the time. They just, you're just a troubled kid. You're just a, and the only way that I could concentrate and look at stuff was or to pay attention in class was to sit back and sketch on a little piece of paper while i'm listening you know uh-huh. and so a teacher at first used to say you can't do that i said okay so i just sat there do nothing i started falling asleep they said you can't fall asleep i said well i gotta do something <laughs> hands. i said so if i it's just he goes so, so you're paying attention i said yes ma'am and so when i'm looking down drawing stuff i'm listening to, i'm absorbing everything like a sponge right and so um she started going, wow, you know, you, you got, you know, straight A's and stuff like that. You're doing really well. So she started telling these other teachers, you know, just I think you need to just let him do his thing because he's doing really well. You don't have to tell him anything. <laughs> and so uh, so I, I had the pass. You know, I had a, a, a teacher's pass, should right. I say, that anytime I was in class, I was the only one able to draw, you know, because they were like, let him just let him do his thing because we don't have to tell him anything. He just absorbs it and he's he's doing great. Yeah. And so I ended up going to middle school and middle school back then started between seventh, eighth and ninth grade. It didn't. Now it's uh, now it moved over to sixth, seventh and eighth now, mm-hmm. which it was about 15 years ago. But at that time, I, I was in seventh grade, and they said, you know, we need to go ahead and put you in art class. And I'm like, um, I'm not really into art. 
just do it for fun, you know? Yeah. And so this, we ended up having this big class and it was about 40 something kids in there. They were mixing up two, three classes all together. So it was a two hour session. And mine was a very, the very first class. So the lady says there, she says, okay, well, they ended up putting this round table and I could remember a cinder block, an apple, a can, a telephone, oh, telephone, um, uh, something else and something that I couldn't see because it was out, out of my perspective. I couldn't see what the other side was. So as everybody was getting different angles, different objects to look, and they were going to draw it. And I said, um, I don't want to draw that. You know, <laughs> it's boring. I don't want to draw it. And she's like, well, you're going to have to draw it. You know, we, we got two weeks session to do this. And I just looked at her. I said, well, I can do it before the end of the class. Wait, two <laughs> she's like, weeks? No, no. And she's like, no, you, you got two weeks to do this, you know, to sketch it out. I said, no, I, I really don't want to do that. And and it's just not my thing. I don't want to draw a cinder block. I don't want to draw an apple. That's just boring <laughs> stuff, man. And so I ended up drawing it in the class. Man, she got upset, man. She was so upset with me. And, she's, and everybody was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. And me, I was just, and I wasn't showing off or anything. I was just like, I, I'm going to go ahead and do it for her because this is what she wants. The problem of it was she was mad because I did it within that two hours <laughs> and not wait for the two weeks. I didn't want to sit there and keep sketching and sketching and sketching over, you know, everybody else is doing that and they're trying to, you know. Like, so she I'm sent good. me to the office. So she sent me to the office, man. She was pretty upset. And so the principal there at the time was sitting there going, so what's, what are you doing in here? And I said, I said, I don't know. She put me in here. So she's asking. She put this paper on there and started giving. He's being a smart aleck and this and that. He should be paying attention in class and this and that. So he, <laughs> he drew this in class. He goes, yeah, you're an art teacher. He goes, yeah. So what's the problem? Well, he's supposed <laughs> to be doing it within two weeks. And this is, so is this done? She goes, well, basically, yeah. So when did he start it? Earlier, you know, this and that. And he's like, I don't understand. Why, why are you pissed off at him, you know? <laughs> and so she had really no clue that I was already an artist. But she was just mad at the concept that she wasn't teaching me. She was that, you mad know, she wanted that you're to take better control. than <laughs> So I was like, okay. So another teacher, which was a, the higher grade art teacher, she sat there. And she was a ninth grade art teacher. She took me under her wing. And she came in there and she says, you're coming to my class. When you come in here, I've seen what you can do. Just do whatever you like. <laughs> you don't have to be told, you know, just do whatever. I want to see what you can do. So everybody else had assignments. I wasn't. But whenever I was in class, I would sit there and sketch. I'd get a little piece of paper, a little, you know, something that was just on the floor, or just an right. extra piece of paper, tear it off. And I'd draw a little man or something while I'm listening in class. As soon as I was done, I would get it and I would. Sprinkle it up, throw it in the garbage can. My <laughs> buddy would go behind me in every class and pick up two or three out of the trash can. I was going to say. I had no clue he was doing this. This went on for years. <laughs> so you probably could have sold them back then. Okay, so he's been trying to tell me and going over and over and over. Dude, you need to draw. You need to draw. This is your destiny. You need to draw. And I'm like, no, just, I just didn't really believe in it. I just didn't think, you know, I've always had that little thing like we're talking about. Yeah. Um, art starving artists. And I didn't want to be a little starving artist. I didn't know how to do my thing or I didn't know how to sell myself or anything. So it was just, um, so when I turned 16, I started working. I started working as a part-time job. And, you know, from that point, I just lost interest in everything. I just wanted to work and do my thing and, you know, become a man. And, right. and you know, that's the way to do it. You know? And so for years, he's been bugging me. Like I said, it's, everything's going to come back around. I'm trying to make everything come back around to this story. And so nine, just over nine years ago, uh, nine years and several several weeks, you know, because I uh, I was in the middle of doing some stuff and I was in the middle of thinking about well, I think I'm gonna you know I guess I'm gonna go ahead and retire with the with the what I'm doing. I'm gonna be a train operator for an engineer for a while. I'm, you know, it's gonna be this and that. And he kept going, no, no, no. You need to be a you need to be an artist. You need to be an artist. No, 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 no. 
So I started taking up a little bit of MMA. I was doing some stuff for, nice. for photography, for photography, not, not fighter. Oh, I'm, okay. uh, I'm not a fighter. No, 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 no. I, but you know, I'm a big <laughs> guy, but you no, know, I just, I, I, I've been in too many fights in my life and, I don't like hurting anybody. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about that because everybody knows about me. All They're right. like, "Oh God, you're you're just a uh, my wife, man." Uh, it's embarrassing because I, she's like, "Oh my God, I don't want to hear that you beat up somebody else again." <laughs> and I, and it was just protecting myself. I always learned how to protect myself because of my father, and he just never thought that I should ever get picked on. And it was one of those things. It's like you know when your father sits there and tells you. You either do it or I'm going to beat your ass. Right. He never touched me. He never touched me in my life except for when I was about five or six. And he swatted my butt. That little sting, I remember. So it was like, never again. <laughs> you know, that one time, you're going to learn. So he never, I was never one of those kids that got beat or anything like that. But um, anyways, I was. Uh, All right. Nine years. I was doing, sir. <laughs> I said, okay, nine years, right? Okay, so yeah, nine years. Uh, so I'm sitting back, and and he says, dude, he says, can you? He goes, can you come over and eat dinner with us? I said, yeah, you know. So we went over there to his house, and um, this was several months before I became became started becoming an artist. And so um, he was sitting there going, he goes, I need to show you something. He goes, so we're eating and stuff. So he goes in his room. He comes back with about five shoe boxes and one big box of just crumbled paper. No way. <laughs> no way. And so I'm sitting there and I'm looking and go, so I'm looking and I'm like, whoa, this is so cool. You know, it's like, I thought he found this stuff. Like, and I'm like, wow, cool. This is amazing. Cause I never signed them. Right. I never did anything. I just drew them and just threw them away. And so I'm sitting there for about 10 minutes, just go, oh my God, look at this. And I'm just like opening the paper. Like, like, don't even wow. remember. Right. And I no, no memory whatsoever. And I'm like, wow, this is beautiful, man. And his wife goes, Chris, don't you know your own art? I'm sitting there going, yes, come on <laughs> in, please. Hey, what's up? I'm, I'm doing, a, no, come on in. You can come on in. That's all right. This is my daughter. Well, yeah, come on. I can't be on video because my video is not working with this. So, but he can hear me. Well, you can tell her uh, I do appre appreciate the shading she did on my picture. Though. Yeah, it's hanging up. Where there. is it? At? It's hanging Which up. It's hanging up uh, this way. This is Batman. Yeah, I see it. Is that him? You're welcome. Oh, wait, let me see it. I can't. What is that? The Batman. I did that. Oh, I don't. Know. I can't zoom with. I did that. Is that one right there by your door? Yeah. I did that. Can't zoom, but yeah. Dark Knight Returns. I did that. Yep. I did that. You can't even remember what you drew a couple no. months ago. I sometimes I don't, man. Are you serious? Can I see it? I'm not I'm not kidding. Let me uh I, I apologize, man. No. You don't have to do that. No, let me... I can't I, I'm serious. I can't see it. Are you here? Yeah, I did the shading on that. What is that? What's that? I can't do that. I know I did not. Yes, we did. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, okay. I was just like, I. It, it took me a second. I'm like, I did that one. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah. Okay, man. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> you like that one? Okay, hold on. He's got to put his earpieces on. Yeah. Wow. I was going to come in here and start doing something, but it's okay. We'll, right. I'll go live here in a little bit because it's blocked you for. Go, yeah, go I don't have a Zoom. I, that was. I have a webcam no. too, so. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do here in a little bit. I promise you. But yeah, I just I see it, man. But I'm like, I, dude, I'm. Like I said, I don't keep memories like that as soon as i do work i just it's like it's gone kind of like what i was just talking to you about my buddy yeah and so like real quick just because you're gonna laugh and he was just like and his wife's like you know you don't know your own work and i said no i, I don't you know i just you know it's just 
I don't keep up with that. You know, it's just going. It's just a, it's just something that I thought about. I drew it. It's gone. And that's what he says. This is the reason why you need to go ahead and do what you're doing. This is why I've been asking you to bug you, man, because you've got it. And people want your work. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm good. I'm I'm good. I, I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and retire with the train deal. Uh-huh. So he leaves. So I, about a week later, where my wife wanted to go visit uh, back home in Virginia, which uh, her family's in. And so we went up there to go leave. So we're going to go ahead and take a two week vacation. Ended up becoming almost a three week vacation because they wanted us to stay longer. So when I get back home, man, there's this desk that I'm sitting right again, right now behind. Not the one that you see me on when I was drawing, but this is the big glass table that he ended up putting in here. He put uh, $3,200 worth of, of of work into this deal. Wow. And, and I had no clue. I just kind of looked at it and I said, what the hell is this? And my wife, everybody was involved in it. I just didn't know. And he says, this is your destiny. you got to do this. This is your destiny, man. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. So I didn't touch it. I wasn't around it, man. I was just like, I don't want it in here. I don't, I don't draw. I don't draw anymore. I don't do that. He says, Chris, you, you, you got to do this. This is what you're, you're made for this, man. So I still had that little fear that I can't retire because I don't know if I can make a living. You that have that, scary. you know, that big thing. Scary. Yeah, no, it wasn't really, it wasn't scary because my wife had a great job, but it was just one of those things where it's like, man, what if I fail, man? What if I fail? And it was, yeah, you were, you're right. It's kind of a little scary moment, but it was, I didn't care about the money. It was not that at all. It was just, I was afraid I was going to fail. And so um, for two weeks, I didn't do anything. And I was already doing stuff for the MMA. I was doing photos. I was doing a lot of the photos because I was really doing photography. I was actually showing my other daughter how to do photography and she's legally blind. And mm-hmm. so she was, so she was, she became a great, she's awesome because now she's a psychologist. <laughs> she works for, she makes great money. But um, so I'm sitting back and we're about to go to this event. And everybody, they're all doing this. Um, one guy was, one kid was like, he's 19 years old. And he was like, hey, I want to, you know, he was, he had this, he was going to be a fighter. And he was going to be, uh, was an upcoming fighter in about six weeks from that point. And so they were at a meeting. There were, you know, you do the thing where you sit back, the ref describes everything. You know, you do this, do this. If you need to tap out, you need to call this, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you make sure this, 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 you don't, you know, you don't drink this. You don't do this. You know, if you need to tap out, you let me know. I need to know because if you want to the fight to continue, this is the little meetings that they have. They all have the same meetings. Yeah. And so the kid's sitting back and his and and so he had this shirt on and he had this. He looked like a joke, man. He looked like <laughs> he he did this dragon on his shirt with markers and stuff, and it looked like a chicken, and it just looked terrible. And so. Um, <laughs> Like, and I looked sucks. at it, I told his dad, I said, yeah, it's like, a, it's, I told his dad, I said, look, man, I, I can do something for him. I already got a lady, a friend of mine who's a lawyer, but she ends up, she does screen printing. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm already doing some work for MMA stuff. And I, I don't mind designing something for him and making him something. And, and so the kid goes, no, nah, man, this is a cool picture, man. You know, so he was really proud of this thing. So his dad ended up contacting me, said, yeah, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. And so I ended up making them about five shirts, man. No charge. You know, I just did it out of my own thing. And, wow. And so uh, You're like you need a better getting it, man. He sat there and he goes, "Oh my God, my shirt looks like crap compared to this." <laughs> and I was just beginning. I was just at the beginning stages of Facebook. And so he posted that, tagged me. My friend comes back around. And he gets upset. He's not upset like mad. He's just like, oh, so you'll make a shirt for a kid that you hardly know, but I've been bugging <laughs> you to draw and you won't do crap for me. And, and so I said, well, so when people found out about that, oh, my God, Chris is back. He's drawing. So all my friends who knew me started buying my art. So I didn't know how to market that, man. It was just a new thing. 
So that's kind of the little feedback of how I ended up starting is because of that, because of Sean ended up really, that, really pushing. That's awesome. You're, no, you're number one fan. Your very first fan kept all those, all those sketches. Yeah, he did. He that, was, he, was just, he really believed in me, man. And he ended up because he had a, he had a big business. He had a tire shop and he had a furniture shop, you know, and he did the furniture shop just for fun. You know, his uh-huh. tire business was that was his thing. He just did tires. He was a huge mechanic. And so he was a mechanic firsthand. He was one of the number one mechanics for a Nissan company here. But he owned a tire shop, which a lot of business came in there. So he was making money as a mechanic, making money as a tire shop. And plus he had, you know, a furniture business. And so uh, it, it just he he just said, "Dude, I got to make you. You you. This is the reason why I made you a desk. Yeah, I made it from the furniture deal. I ended up. These guys did it for you. This is what I spent on it. You need to do this. And from that point, man, I just started. I started working, man. I just started doing it, doing mm-hmm. it on the side, and it just went from there, dude. That is a there. that is a true friend. I think we all need more people like that. They're, they're yeah. believe in, believe in what you can do and and push you to be your best. I mean, that's." That's just an awesome story. Um, um, did um, anything else, man? Yeah, it's, uh, ask, please ask away, man. <laughs> I I like your stories, man. I I really dig it a lot, and I, I think that's what people like about you too. Um, that you're real personable. Um, you don't mind sharing stuff. Um, no, I, I don't. Talking about and stuff, and I think that's what um. Why you know I kind of mentioned uh, artists are kind of jerks, but I think um, because it comes so. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm talking. I'm not. No, telling no, you. and you're right, and you're right, dude. They, but, they really are. But I think because um, when you talk about the starving artists, it's like I think they put all their eggs in that one basket, and and they're, you know, they have to be picky. They have, they charge a lot, and yeah, they do because and that's do. that's what they do. But I think in your case, um, you know, it seems to come so easy to you. Um, Cause I've watched other artists that do videos and it seems like they take forever or days as yeah, you will, yeah, on, on, on one picture. And this, yeah. you know, you're talking about knocking something out in a, an hour. In two. about an hour or two. Yeah. And that's the thing. And that's, um, that's amazing. It's like, I think maybe, I don't know, maybe they charge more because they put more effort. Well, yeah, not, not put do, more effort, but I mean, it takes a lot more time for them. And um, then, yeah. Whereas and, for you, it comes so easy, but they're over there going, well, I worked on this for three days, man. So I got to pay myself. And I'm like, I've already worked on 10 things or, or 15 things, you know? And they're like, what? And I'm like, it's, it's, it's to me, it's like a dime a dozen, you know, it's like, it's just, yeah. it's just a piece of paper and something to write on. <laughs> That's basically it, yeah. man. And it, it, I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound like anything. Yeah. I just, I just, just knocked over something I wasn't paying attention. But um I wasn't being a prude or anything. It's just no, I mean how do I put it? It's just one of those things where I got the microphone on the deal, so I gotta get this picked up. I got the microphone on the camera so you can hear me better. But I was like <sighs> and, and they have the right to I mean it's it's their art, they can choose to charge whatever they want. Yeah, um, it is. But they were sitting there arguing with me and telling me, "Hey, uh, you're just you're you're you're, char- you're you're underestimating your work." And I said, "What do you mean?" They said, "Well, because at the time, I was selling something like I do now for 60, 80 bucks. Mm. They were selling it for three hundred and forty, you know, four hundred bucks." And I'm right. like, "Oh," and they're like, "So I need to charge?" Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I went to 160, <laughs> and I stayed with that 160, 180, you know, for an average one. And they're like, "No, you can't do that." I said, "What do you mean?" They, they thought I was cornering the market, and I wasn't. I was just like, "Dude, I just—it's a dime a dozen, man. It doesn't really mean that. It, it does, but yeah. it doesn't mean the—it's the, not the money, man. I'm trying to do it where people can afford it, man. You know." And I think that's what's a, attractive uh, to you as well. I mean. Just uh, like you're saying, for someone to get as big of pieces that you make um, at the prices you charge, right. is, is, it's it's right. almost unheard of, you know? I mean, I've seen your, some of your 
big pieces and you talk about, you know, about how much would it be to sell. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's really a great price for that big of a piece. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of people were going, well, how, you know, like this thing, I've had this thing on my door for like about two months, man. Cause I just had, it. I didn't want to step on it or anything else. And my daughter says, I want it. Well, where are you going to put it? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> so I put it on the door just to hang it. And I haven't even, even talked about it. I didn't even really want to sell it. I didn't care about it. It was just something that me and her worked together and just right. showing something. And so this one guy says, well, you can sell that for like 540, 600 bucks. I'm going, man, the paper was only like four bucks for that sheet. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it took me like about an hour or to do. Yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, no, I never made any offers and didn't ask anybody if they wanted or anything. It was just something that I put up there, you know. Now, if you want it, man, I don't mind shipping it to you and, you know, hang it up on your wall for fun, you know, because it's better on your wall than mine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's no big deal. <laughs> but it's like, um, but they, they were really getting upset. And there was friends that I had on Facebook at the first time because when I was beginning, they thought I was trying to corner the market. And I'm like, dude, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of people who are going to want art. I can't draw millions and millions. Yeah. There's a lot of artists out there. They're all working, you know. You know, I've been doing it for nine years and I've already did, like I said, over 4,300 pieces. Wow. You know, that's not a lot. You know, it, it is. But yeah. if you think about the time frame, it's not that much. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and do billions and billions. And that's what I think they're all afraid of. And I'm like, no, I'm not trying to corner. There's no way I can corner the market because I'm going to be retiring pretty soon. You know, I'll give it another five more years and that's it. It's not like, um, you know, I'm not trying to take anybody's job away. There's plenty of work. But I think that, that they're just so scared that, that you know, I'm going to corner the market. And yeah. I'm like. There's nothing like, to do. <laughs> There's like, lots of work out there, man. <laughs> they're just scared, you know, hey, people are going to go to you because you cost a lot less than them. I don't know. There's, uh, there's that little yeah. fear again. Um, and, and I understand that, man. I do. I really do. But it's just one of these things. I had this, uh, this thing that I was holding up because I was moving some things around here. And it fell off on my shelf. So that's why you heard the big crash. Uh, hopefully... Up. It wasn't any of those uh those Lego sets you have up there. No, no, this is right here by my desk. This is everything I'm moving around. So I kind of tapped it, and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot I had that balance. So <laughs> it's no big deal. I'm just making sure everything's cool. It's just it just holds my pins, basically. Uh, but um, man, please. I, that's, I that's heard. Cool, uh, man. Yeah, I heard you talk to. Um, I haven't caught any of the recent lives, but uh. Uh, I know you did talk about one time, or I heard you talk about uh, that you've been offered a um, uh, position to buy a comic yes. company. Yes, uh, six years ago from DC, and about four or five months later after that, and uh, from Marvel. And what what happened was they were asking, and I'm like, no, I just can't do that because right now I'm very comfortable with what I'm making. It goes and back to, out, sir. I think it goes back to. Your art class, right? I mean, you don't want to be told what to draw. Well, it's not that. No, 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 no. no. It wasn't really about that, sir. Because I don't mind, you know, because everybody always tells me what to draw anyways. Because that's <laughs> how I make my work. Right. But what it was, was when you're doing something and you've got DC and Marvel. And, you know, they can make a price because they're like, oh, we'll pay anybody cheap because they want to work for us. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. So when you're used to making, you know. 1200 anywhere from 1200 to 1800 a week you know comfortably mm. at that time you know i'm doing a little bit more now with tiktok so it's it's really nice but at that time it was like why would i want to work for 350 to 400 dollars a week when i could be you know because i was doing a lot more than that when i was driving the train because right. i was you know uh i was working for the union and so um you know, you're making a hell of a lot more compared to, it's like, why do I want to downsize? So, um, you know, I, I enjoy it. So it was like, no, I just passed it. It's like, I can't do it. And people, are you crazy? I said, well, are you crazy? Would you rather make, you know, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600 a week? Or would you like to make $400 a week? Well, that's what I mean. You'll work for them. I'm like, and work no, on your own schedule. they're not going to pay you that much. They're going to pay you less. Oh, I get it. I said, yeah, there's people that will do it because 
I want to work for DC. I want to work for Marvel. I want to work for Image, yeah. Top Cow, you know. And it, and it, it just, just didn't interest you, right? Yeah. So I, it's, it's something I would pass. I said, no. Is it, good, man. Have you ever considered, um, well, let, let me ask you this. You talk about your you have photographic memory, which you can tell. Yeah, go ahead, man. You can tell from, from your your work, like, it is spot on. Um, familiar images. Um, have you ever had original ideas or original characters? Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of original ideas. A lot of originals. A lot. But there's people that sit back and are like, I, I can't get this anywhere else. I really like this design. Can mm-hmm. I get that? Sure. Um, but I'm going to have to do my own take on it. So, you know, I'm going to switch it around because I still give um, whoever they want. Like if they want Batman on there, I still give Batman their credit. You know, I still give DC their credit. Yes. Uh, I still write, you know, it's DC comics and I'll put the little circle with the trademark. It says it's their stuff. It's, you know, it's not my, it's not my take. No, not um, a lot of people do that. Yeah, and they, they sit there, and, and so there's people who ask for prints. And I said, I can't do that. I said, why? And he said, well, because right now I'm just, right. I'm a fan artist. I'm a, mm-hmm. you know, I do a lot of fan art. And doing fan art, you can go ahead and do anything you want. You can duplicate something, but you can only make one of it. Right. And if I go around and I make duplicates of that picture, then I'm cutting the middleman or cutting the them which is like dc for instance and i made like like the picture that i did for you in the back now if right. i made duplicates of that and did 100 copies so i could sell you can't do that because dc is going to go no you can't do that because now you're taking away their money does it make sense it's like it's a it's yeah it's it's a no-no I've it's always, a no-no you i've always wondered the rules on that because you know you go to comic cons or these when we could go oh, yeah them. When we can and, go to Comic Cons, you know, and people are selling prints left and right. And it's I've always wondered. The, yeah, the because they have they probably work for the company or whatever. But if they get caught for doing something else, it's a no no. And I got to I went to a Comic Con back in 2015 when I went to when we were up in Virginia at the time I went to Richmond. And so that was a lot of people who were like other artists who were wanting to meet me and got to meet me. I don't know if you know who Bob Camp is. Think about uh, it, and you're going to go, Bob Camp. I sounds Yeah, sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. Bob Camp is the artist for Ren and Stimpy. Okay, yes. Okay. I went there, and I was wanting to go see William Shatner because... Because <laughs> William my, Shatner. I, I, just, I just advertised that. I was on my Facebook. Oh, William Shatner's going to be up here just down the road, 80 miles from here. If, you know, I'd love to go see him, but yeah, I didn't think I was going to go see him because it was, you know, it, I was busy with work and whatnot. My nephew ended up ca- ca- catching on to that. And he goes, oh, so you're going to go see William Shatner? You're going to go to the Comic-Con? I said, no, 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 no. I just advertised it. So you're advertising for them? No, no, no. I just advertised to my friends to let them know down the road <laughs> there's a Comic-Con going on. <laughs> and William Shatner's going to be there. That's all I was doing. Yeah. Oh, so you're going to go? I said, no, no, no. I can't, I can't go. I, I'm not going to go to that, man. It's, there's nothing I can do. Oh, man, I, I would love to go. And so my... My brother-in-law, which is my wife's sister's husband, he's a he's an ex-marine, very very educated, very very smart and intelligent guy. He works and he just retired with the Pentagon. Wow. And so he was the type of guy that just made money. He sit back and made, and I kid you not. He would make at least six thousand a day. What that type of money? That wow. yeah, he was in that type of money. What do you wow. do? Give advice to who? I can't tell you. <laughs> okay, Thanks. so you know he was just giving advice to to people up there, and that's Free what he was doing. Right? And so he was on the he was because his son wanted to go see the Comic Con. His son was uh, twenty seven at the time. Back in 2015, I want to go see William Shatner. I want to go see William Shatner. So he goes on there. And so I, I get online and I start talking to a couple of my buddies. I ended up contacting and stuff. And I started going, hey, is there any way I can get some, you know, some 
can you can you save me some passes and stuff like that? I need mm-hmm. that way I can go up there and get them because I don't know if I can get any. My brother in law is looking online. He says he can't get any right now because there was so many people buying them for William Shatner. And so they found out it was yeah. Well, for for being at the Comic Con. Okay. So I'm like, so I'm a Chris, you're gonna be up here? I said, I said yeah. He said you know well I, I don't really want to but you know my my nephew wants to go and. I don't know. If you get your butt over here, I will give them to you. <laughs> I said, <laughs> what? I said, we want to meet you, man. Wow. You know, because a lot of my friends who are artists, I never got to meet them in person. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, you're serious? He goes, yeah. So I said, he goes, how many do you need? I just need three. I can't do three. I can give you six. <laughs> uh, I just uh-huh. need three. I can't do three. I can only give you six. Okay. You're Whatever, like, what? man. So I, <laughs> I went downstairs. I went up there and made a call to Mark. And Mark sitting there called me. He goes, what's going on, man? I said, uh, I got six tickets. You're full of, you know, he started, you're full of shit, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, no, man, I'm not being serious, man. He goes, if we go all the way up there and they're not there, man, he goes, I'm going to get pissed. I said, Mark, have I ever lied to you, man? And he goes, no, but I would be pissed because I would, you know, we're driving all the way up there to this and that. And we're going to Richmond and, 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 you know, if we don't get any tickets. I, you know, the, the drive back is going to be miserable, man. I said, oh, okay, whatever. They said they they got six tickets for me. And he goes, all right, man, I'll hold you to that because he couldn't get them online. Uh-huh. He was like, he found one, and that was it. And um, so we drove up there the next morning. Well, that night I ended up doing uh, my co- my nephew wanted to get a William Shatner picture so he can get it. Uh, he wanted me to draw him. And you know that William Shatner where he's doing and he's got his hands out in front of him going and he's doing that, oh, you know, really excited. Yeah, Have you ever yeah, seen yeah, that yeah. picture? Where he's, oh, he, yeah. Okay, I drew a picture just like that <laughs> and sketched it out. And he uh, he loved it. And so I ended up drawing another picture of William Shatner that evening. And I was up until about 1.30 in the morning because I usually work at night anyway. So it didn't right. bother me. And so I did a picture with him and his horse because I was looking online what he likes. And, you know, he want, he likes horses. He really likes uh, show horses. So I did this one where he's sitting in the back of a buggy, the little two-wheeler. And he's uh-huh. got like a little whip and stuff. And the little his horse is kind of like, you know, moving, trotting, whatever. So I drew that picture of him and I put it away. We went to the Comic Con, picked up our tickets. Everybody was impressed. I uh, had three extra ones. Uh, I didn't know what to do with them. So I saw somebody outside, two couple with a little girl. And I sat there and I gave it to them. And they're like, they thought I was a scalper. And I said, no, I'm just you know here to give you some tickets. I don't. Because they said, we're trying to get tickets and we can't get them. I said, well, here's some VIPs. Go, you know, do your thing. Wow. And they were like tripped out, man. And they were like, oh, my God, you know, oh, my God, I can't believe this. I can't. And so, you know, we went in and whatnot. And Mark's like, oh, my God, Chris, this is so many times you have come through. And I didn't think you because he's the kind of guy that can get anything. Because, you know, when you work yeah. for the Pentagon, you can do anything. And he goes, oh, my God, dude, you really came through. And I'm like. I didn't do it. It was my buddies that were in here. Well, who is it that you know? I said, well, they're one of the guys that's working one of the venues here. And he was one of the guys that was in charge. Started going around. And every time I would walk and see somebody, I crash, whoa, you know, they were freaking out. <laughs> so I'm going to get to the Bob, the Bob Camp thing, man, because uh, he was actually at one of the one of the, the deals and he was just sitting down and he's a real hippie type dude real yeah me and you you know yeah <laughs> you know like that that like type of guy you know, that's Chong, how he talks right? and and so i i um he was looking down and it was about 15 15 people surrounded him just looking down watching him draw never nobody was talking it was just watching him and i said hey man i really appreciate you you know i've been trying to get on your facebook man and you know and he goes yeah man cool he never looked up <laughs> yeah man yeah well you know i'm busy and this and that cool man you know uh just i'll talk to my girlfriend man and we'll see if we can get you on my facebook you know and this blah 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 and I go, i've been trying to be friends with you for a couple of years now and uh i just you know thought i could just have a little chat with you and this and that oh man just go ahead and watch me man this is what i do man <laughs> blah, blah, blah. he just started going off and i said okay man so i watched him for about two more minutes and then i finally just 
kind of said, okay, I, I get, I got to meet him. So I just said, well, you know, from one, from one artist to another, I just thought I'd want to say hi to you, man. And, you know, I finally got to just at least say I met you. He looked up, man. And he, looked, the first thing that popped out of his mind, cause my, my username on, on Facebook is Wolfie. Uh-huh. And the first thing he said there, and he goes, Wolfie! And I just, I, 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 my heart stopped, dude. I just got chills and everything because I still got them right now. I just looked at him like, oh, oh my shit. You, 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 know you, you know who I am? He goes, dude, your shit's amazing, man. Oh, you did. So these people are like looking and like, who the hell is him? Because no one's, you know, no one sees me, you know outside the box they just know me on social media man yeah. and I, I was just blown away because i was like you know B- bob camp knows who i am and then he goes dude your stuff so oh i love your stuff man hell yeah i put you on my facebook man hit yeah, right down just you know so <laughs> and i say dude i've been trying to be friends with you for a long time so i ended up getting several pictures with him man you know and i said i just want to get these pictures because a buddy of mine uh, the guy who does my computer that I was just talking about, he's uh, a real, real high tech nerd. I mean, he's the bomb <laughs> and he's a big Bob camp fan. And I said, I want these pictures so I can send it to him. So I can, and I want a signature so I can give it to you because anything for you, man, anything. And I said, uh, you know, it just sounded so cool. You know, it was, yeah. just, it was really amazing, but it, it, those are moments that you just never forget, you know, that's it, awesome. It, it meant a lot. It, it meant a lot. That's awesome that he knew you, right? Yeah, it was just amazing. It, just, it was just a matter of him. I'm, I'm a nobody. Up. I'm a peon. You know, I'm a peon. Here's Bob Cat. This cartoon's been written in Stippy, and the, and the guy knows who I am. I'm like, oh, <laughs> man, this is this is groovy, man. But that was a uh, that was an amazing piece. That was an amazing moment. Plus, I got to meet a lot of the other artists who got to see me. I got to. Uh, meet William Shatner. I held up the line because I showed him the picture. You know, that, that's another story for another time. So I don't want to just talk about myself. Myself is that, is. is that something you would consider or even doing, like setting up Comic Con? Setting up no, at a con? I don't have time, man. I really don't. And I don't have anything to show for, man. I don't because everything's sold. So what do I take? And they said, <laughs> well, just set up a booth, man. People can watch you draw. And I yeah. said, it's really hard to talk to people because once somebody starts talking to me, I'm not drawing anymore. I'm talking to them. And it's just, that's why I zone out. I try to put like headphones on. I have videos where people are watching me draw and I'm just, I'm zoned. When Once I'm zoned, I don't, I don't care who's in the room. Just, just don't mess with me. Yeah. I just, I'm zoned. Does I, that make sense? Yeah. I think you'd have a crowd at, at your, at your booth if you ever do that, but um, it's, I, I just never really, I just never thought I could do that, man. And uh, my, a buddy of mine who actually does the Evil Dead 2, a uh, friend of mine, he does the inking and the, and the coloring. And wow. uh, he, he's a friend of mine that lives just down the street, down the road. Well, actually, he just moved out in the country. He ended up buying a house and a uh, good friend of mine. And we've been friends for going on 13 years. And for the first, you know, what just the last four years five years from now now he we just found out each other that we were both artists wow <laughs> i didn't so know he was close. an artist yeah he was just he's just a, he's got, he's a band member he's got his own band and everything and you know but he was uh he does the stuff for the evil dead and uh if you want something from him i can make sure i can get it for uh, frank hannah which is the writer for the book you know, because I ended up doing showing everybody else because I'm looking at it right now and go, man, I can get you something like that and get it signed to you from them. Because it's uh, we we actually did a, a Thanos together uh, and we we just did that for some friends. We ended up making 25 pictures and everybody's like, how do I get a hold of one? Oh, we just <laughs> did. We just did this for our friends. Yeah. We did an inking. I did an inking sketch and he did the coloring and everything else. So then we made prints of that. And we did not sell them, if that makes any sense. Yeah, we just yeah. made prints for our friends. So we were allowed to do that when you make prints, but you can't make a profit out of something else. I got you. And so he went bonkers of just him going, dude, Chris, I just can't. Because his name's Chris Summers, and I'm Chris. So we're both Chris's. So he's just going, Chris, man, I just can't believe how 
good your art is, man. And I'm just so overwhelmed that we were able to share something together and do something. And I'm like, I'm just really happy that you were wanting to ink or actually uh, color in my stuff. And he was just, dude, it's just so I, I, um, uh, I could probably do something like that later and we'll probably get together and we'll probably do something like that. I'll probably end up making something and, and making prints, but I can't sell them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't, that's... I can't profit out of them. But, Whoever gets yeah. them though, man. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, Frank Hanna is the writer. So I sent off this big poster thing that, uh, and I got the book, the poster, my thing, the picture that I sent of, Bruce Campbell, and uh, I almost got to meet him twice, uh, mm. and I really wanted him to sign it, but he never got a chance to, and um, I was really impressed. I did this for my daughter, you know. Uh -huh. I wanted to get something for her birthday, and boy, she is, so it's up here right above my desk, and everybody looks at it, comes in, oh, wow, where did you get that sign? <laughs> Then he looked at the Boba Fett. Oh my God! You know Jeremy Boy? I said no, I don't. I'm, I didn't get to meet him at the at the Mega Con, which was in Orlando back in 2016. I didn't get to go. I sent the picture off to get it signed by him and Stanley also. And so I got the. How did you do that? I said oh, just people that you know that I know that would yeah. do it for me. So that's awesome. It, yeah. Now, but, you uh, you get requests all the times now for all these yes, commissions. Sir. Um. You say you draw anything. Just tell me what you want. Is there anything that you you won't draw or a midget in underwear? <laughs> <laughs> you know, some strange. You know, some off. I I don't mind drawing a lot of things. Um, there's uh, anything. Are I most draw, of the, most of the from Native American. Most of the requests are they more comic related, uh, pop culture? Uh, related? forty percent of my work. Forty percent of my work really? is comic related. Yes, because it's uh TikTok. You learn how to market yourself because that's where everybody looks. And I was trying to, if you go back into my TikTok and you go to the very beginning stages when I first started, you'll notice that I there was a guy named Stinky Dog or something like that. I forgot his name. He's got like a million followers now. He was the guy that did the skateboard, listening to the Stevie Nicks thing. I don't oh, know yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I, you remember yeah, that guy, yeah. Stinky Dog or something. Anyways, he became a big hit. And uh, I know the story to that. Um, but... To make my point, a friend of mine says, I love Stevie Nicks, Chris. I've seen you do art upside down before. I've seen your art doing backwards. I've done negative stuff, you know, backwards. Mm. And it, by, just by memory, like I said, phonogenic part sometimes takes place. Um, so he sat there and he goes, can you do me a Stevie Nicks? And I said, yeah, I, I can go ahead and do that. And he goes, I'll help you out. And, you know, I'll push your, I'll push your, your TikTok, which never happened. You know, it's just, <laughs> yeah, I ended up with, like I said, at the very beginning with 157 people, you know, 157 yeah. people. It was my daughter who actually helped to push with, give your stuff away, <laughs> give <laughs> do a giveaway. But a lot of people didn't know when I did that. I said, look at the video, check it out. I did a Stevie Nicks. It's upside down. It's time lapse video. It's under a minute. It's about a minute long. There's three videos. The the third one, when it's complete, it's just me showing the picture. That you know, there's no. It's just a little bit of music. There's no other pictures, but the other two videos is when I'm both doing the the picture, actual picture, and time lapse. And so people are like, "You did that upside down." I said, "Yeah." And I said, it, it, "I'm looking at it, and it's unbelievable." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm." My mind works like that. I don't know why it just works that way. That's crazy. And my wife comes in here and watches me sometimes and she just like gets blown away. And, and it's, I'm just humble about a lot of the things, the way people come in, you know, cause I have, I had this one kid come in and he said, um, um, Mr. Castillo, um, and he was a little 11 year old kid. And he says, uh, my my dad wants to know if you will draw me something and find out how much you'll charge and this and this. And I said, and, you know, I'm really, what do you call it? Uh, I get weak knees when I do stuff for kids, man. I mean, it's just like, because 
they can't ask for it, you know? Yeah. And right now I'm kind of getting a little teary eyed because I always feel for them, man. Cause you know, they can't ask, they don't have the money for it. You know, if they do, you know, bless them and stuff like that, but you, you know, they want something from you. And it's just like, and I just sat there and I go, so I called his dad. I said, Hey, I got, I got him over here. And, you know, I was just wanting to uh, I could stay here for about 20 minutes. And he goes, well, is he bothering you? I said, no, no, no. He came over here. I let him in, you know, my wife's in the other room and everything else. And um, he, he was asking for this. Oh, well, you know, I, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to bother you or anything like that, but I've seen your work and stuff like that. And people are talking about it and, and, you know, just tell me a commission. I said, well, can you give me about 20 minutes, man? And we'll, we'll sit there and we'll think about it and I'll, I'll contact you back. And he says, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, man. You see, if he's bothering you, man, just let me know. I said, no, 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 it's all good. So while he was in here, man, I ended up drawing him a, a, a Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. He wanted a Spider-Man and the, a partial of a Green Goblin. And then he wanted like Venom. So the Green Goblin and Venom were both attacking Spider-Man. And so I sat there and I did it. And I was just talking to him. And I said, if you just watch and promise not to say anything, just watch me draw and I will do it for you, you know? Mm-hmm. And so my wife comes in here and she, the most of the time she was sitting there watching because she was just like, you know, she got teary eyed because she was like, she thought that was the biggest thing. And uh, he looked at it, man. And he, I mean, he, he had tears in his eyes. I would and right now I got kind of got some tears in my eyes because, you know, it made him feel good. Yeah. And um, I, 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 I felt, put it in a folder and everything for him because I had folders at the time. And uh, I sent him on his way. I said, yeah, just tell your dad, man. He says, you know, no, no charge. Don't worry about it, man. And he goes, so his dad called, man. He comes over and he was like, dude, I'm really sorry, man. I mean, I didn't want to. And I said, no, you don't understand. You know, I, I don't mind doing stuff like this, especially for kids. You know, I, I, you, there's just so much that, I'll, you know, I, I wish somebody did that for me when I was a kid. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it wasn't a thing to ask for. I didn't have anybody like that, but I think it would have been cool if I would have known somebody that could do something. You know what I mean? It's just one of those moments. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. It makes it's like me- you're doing, it's like you're doing something back for the, for the, for, yeah, absolutely. For being here on, on the earth, you know, you're here for a reason and I did it for him, you know? Absolutely. And he was absolutely. blown away, man. He was blown away. And that's what made it even better. Any so kid would like, be uh would be lucky yeah. uh, to oh, yeah. get, have it, something it, like it, that. It, <laughs> which um uh, kind of, kind of uh, I don't know why I'm thinking this way, but maybe I thought the other way around that you didn't like kids. <laughs> um, because I know on oh, because of because of TikTok. Yeah. Yo, oh no, no, and the reason why, and no, no, uh, kids are awesome. <laughs> but when you did you hear the story about the kids? What I was making? Why, why I didn't like? Why I didn't want kids no, following me? No, but did now I, now it makes me think that maybe you didn't want to do free pictures for all these kids that were asking. No, <laughs> no, no, it had nothing to do with that, sir. I was when I first got on TikTok. After the first two weeks, I was just now booming up to that one thousand. I started really looking at who was following me, man, and I noticed a lot of kids were following me. Yeah, because you're awesome. And it wasn't a big thing. But when I saw this 11-year-old girl, this little white kid, man, little blondie, really cute little girl, man, I just, it, it, it blew me away because she was using her mom's or some adult's picture. So she mm-hmm. was kind of hiding, you know. And what happened was I just started going through the videos and said, okay, well, let's see what this kid's about. She was in the bathroom. She mm. had the phone pointing like from the mirror, leaning against the mirror, pointing back to her. And so she's got her hands on the counter and kind of looking behind her and looking around, making sure nobody's going to walk in on her. And all of a sudden she starts twerking. So she's dancing, you know, which is not a bothersome thing. What bothered me was when I started looking at who was following her, there was men. The 11 year old kid, I'm estimating she was an 11 year old kid, man. 11, 12 year old. And there was men 50, 60, 70 years old. Shake that ass, baby. Shake that ass. Mm. That's 
where I was like, I'm drawing the line, man. I don't want people like her following me and having people like them follow me also. Does it make sense? Yeah. So I kind of, I just kind of stayed away from that. I want to be, and that was, I hate I don't hate kids. Man. I love kids, man. It's <laughs> awesome. But it was one of those moments where it's like, this is just not right, dude. This is not right at all. And it just, wasn't. You don't need that kind of a no, negative energy. Kind of no man even if it even if really, just by second I was hand. So, yeah i was just so angry so angry i showed my wife and i was just like i can't believe this i just want to just i was just so angry man i just wanted to find these guys and just kill them man i mean you just don't want that kind of you know thing in your life man but it, that's the way i felt man i was just yeah. so angry and uh, so I said, I can't do this, man. So finally ended up con- contacting TikTok. Took them about four days. And they ended up, you know, having a, uh, not a video chat, but they ended up having a, a live little stream with me. And they were talking to me. And I said, look, and, you know, there were business people. And I said, look, and he goes, I'm going to complain about this. I'm going to, because this is, you know, this is enough. I can't have kids. He says, well, we're going to try, try and try and try and do this. So it was kind of like one of these sessions where we're just talking, but we couldn't see each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a phone phone chat. And I said, dude, I, I, it's bothering me. I mean, I pushed it so hard. I needed to talk to somebody. And I said, look, well, we can't. There's no way we can control that because the way you're growing, you're growing so fast that, you know, you're going to have people following you from everywhere. And I said, yeah, I understand. So I kind of really stopped trying to grow as much if that makes sense that was one of the reasons and uh that that, i mean a similar kind of thing that's one of the reasons why i haven't got on tiktok you know um i just wanted to see what my daughter was looking at. i have a 14 year old or 15 year old daughter um and you know they do these little dances and whatnot and yeah and i I just want to bother me that doesn't bother me it's the people who will watch does that make sense yeah and i just that's why I got on TikTok. I wanted to make sure there was no no creeps out there following her. Oh and, God, there's yeah and whatnot. Yeah. So, um, fortunately, my my daughter doesn't really post any videos. She just likes to uh, watch other videos. If that makes sense. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only people she follows are her friends. So yeah. So I'm glad for that. But that was my reason for getting on TikTok and. I started playing around still, with it, and then you, and then found you. Still you still do it? Do you huh? still do it? Um, when I get time, you should. When I get time, yeah. you know, it's yeah, it's it's just a matter of what what to put out, what uh, what's going to grab people's attention and grab, make them uh, want to listen to the podcast and whatnot. But I'm definitely yeah. going to be uh, I'll put something out. Uh, definitely promoting you. I'm going to show off uh, the artwork that I got from you, and. Um. So. I appreciate it, man. And you and you really don't have to. I mean, I got enough. Work no, I am. Um, I've been. I've been. I appreciate. We've been man. back and we've been back and forth trying to get you know through the holidays and everything yeah. in our busy yeah. lives. And I've been wanting to post a picture ever since I received it, and um, I just been waiting until we can get this chance that we. Uh, yeah, can. and I don't mind this. And I was just like, dude, I'm just like, we're we're playing touch tag and i'm like okay man i can't yeah. I, you know there's and so then, much that's going on my work and everything else and then and I, I understand know, no 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 please and yeah, I, I, understand. I know you're busy and i'm like man maybe he didn't see the email and so i'm like and then do i just do i keep pushing him and I'm like i didn't want to scare you away and then oh you didn't scare me away at all man he really didn't it was just like dude i feel so freaking bad man because you know i have to go get bodies sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah Yep. I just had a big old session of that uh, when I went to El Paso uh, three over three weeks ago, and I picked up a lady up there, and that was a very upsetting time. It wasn't really bad. It was just a very, very long day. <laughs> and when we got to the location, we got there approximately 4.45 in the afternoon, and we got to the hospital. It took them about an hour and a half to locate her. Wow. They lost, they lost her. How do you lose a Yeah. Brain? Oh, man. We, it, the thing about it was my buddy, who's very, very loving guy. He's, he's an awesome guy. He's got a funeral home. 
we went into the freezer where they had the other bodies because that's the first place we looked. We had to go over boxes and push things out of the way just to open the freezer. What the heck? And there was two bodies that were in the shelves. The rest of them were stacked on top of each other. On each other. Wow. Now, could you imagine seeing your, finding out that one of your loved ones was like that? It's, that's what was upsetting. That's one of those things and where I'm glad it's... so upset, man. We, we, when we drove out of El Paso at the edge of town leaving, we stopped at a deal and we, he just, he just like, we just need to get, we just need to take a break. We need to eat. We need to just re recoup. And he just had to kind of meditate because he was so upset. It was kind of like that moment with me where about the girl when these men were following her. That was kind of like, that I is, felt like that. that just so upsetting, dude. I'm but glad, I'm glad we don't see that part of it. Um, yeah, and that was the first and only time that it's ever... He's been doing this since he was seven, eight years old. His father wow. used to run you know, a funeral home, so he's always been around it. So he's used to it, but it's like, that was the first time ever. And so that was a thing that I was talking about when I got back, because everybody saw oh, you're back. I said, and, and everybody says, why are you so down? I said, well, so I kind of, you know, I was upset, you know, yeah. this lady... Who didn't have anything and we had to go pick her up she wanted to get buried back here she didn't have very much money but we had you know she died up there and so he did it out of his kindness to go get her you know wow. to do this this whole funeral because he, he said ah, nobody's gonna die like that nobody's gonna if she couldn't afford it i'm gonna go ahead and pay for it you know we're gonna make sure she gets buried right that's the kind of person he is does it make sense yes sir but he was really upset and um it just yeah. happened, man. I don't wanna I don't wanna end on a sorrow note. Um man, you have so many great stories. I'd I'd love to uh to have you on again, <laughs> you know, and just yeah, we can talk about stuff. Uh like whatever you want to ask, man. A returning guest. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um uh but we can we can um start ending this one. But uh one thing I do before uh before I end up uh, in the show, I'm sorry. I like to do a thing I call dork dad questions. Just some random Quit. questions. I used to do right. ten questions, but that's kind of a lot. I just I'll, I'll, no, give, ask you, quite, I'll, I'll give you five questions. These are some are fun, some are serious. No wrong or right answers. Just kind of. Sure. So we'll start off with the first question here, um, and I might know the answer, but uh, so. My my show, I have my own feed, um, and I also am part of a network uh, of other podcast shows that run all on the same feed. And one of the okay. the biggest questions we always have amongst the different shows, because there is a, a Star Wars podcast called the Sarlacc Digest, and, mm -hmm. and some of the other people on there, they have this thing about which is more culturally significant, Star Wars or Marvel? In your opinion? Uh, well, right now, I'm going to be honest with you. For the last, uh, I'm going to say within the last seven, eight years, man, it's been Marvel. But Star Wars has always been the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> now, Marvel was the bomb back in before Star Wars. But, you know, Star Wars to me is more, there's, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's the best. It's Star Wars, right? <laughs> I love Star Wars, man. I love Star Wars. I mean, I grew up on Star Wars. If, if I was to ask myself the same question maybe a couple of years ago, I probably would have said Marvel. But to me, my heart. I was born in '77, so I feel. Yeah, that was the year it came I, out. I feel uh, uh, as like I'm a part of Star Wars, if you will. Yeah. Um, and here lately, I don't know if you know if you caught up with the mandalorian and, and everything that's that's coming yes. out it's just yes. it's, it's so yes. amazing um yes. yes um yeah it's star wars for me so that's the right answer <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you about when i drew something for disney and it's up there there's three pieces that may, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next show you drew uh, something they, for disney yes because yes. they asked for it they were yeah okay so they yeah save that one save that one written. definitely okay. want to know about that just write that in your notes so i won't forget because I'll, I'll forget there's a lot of things I'll forget, so I'll write that in your notes. So I'll ask them this next time. 
But yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Question number two. If um, I don't know if you collect a lot of things. I know you like Lego. Um, if I got memorabilia were, here. Okay. If they were to make an action figure of yourself, what <laughs> what accessories would, would you come with? It would be a hoodie, some shorts. <laughs> a hoodie, some shorts, uh, some sneakers, and it would be called a client. I'll explain that one later. The client. That's my buddy who, the client. The client. He always called me the client. And a Sharpie in your pocket? I don't know if you're, I don't, I, like I told you when I explained, uh, I've been in a lot, a lot of fights, and I've never started <laughs> any of them. I, just, I ended up with a whole bunch of cop friends who got to know me because they had to come up there and they always saw me there. And I was like, I didn't do nothing. I got picked on and everybody who was there. And we'll, we'll talk about that if you want to someday, (laughs) but I've been in over like 82 fights. Holy moly. (laughs) And the only reason why I never lost any of them, you know, I did get beat up, you know, but I would always win. And (laughs) the reason is because my, I always had that thing of my father when I got, uh, my butt handed to me when I was in sixth grade. My father says, I'm just disappointed with you. <laughs> That's the worst. Uh, if I ever hear that, if you don't go back up there and beat those two kids up tomorrow, I'm going to tan your ass. <laughs> and so I went the next day and just beat. And ever since then, every time I'm in a fight, man, that's what I hear is my dad. I don't want to get beat by my I never did, except for when I was like that good old swat in the butt. <laughs> when I was six years old, but it was like just knowing that my dad's going to do that. No, I wasn't going to fight. I wasn't going to lose anything, man. So, yeah. yeah. So undefeated. Yeah, it, would be, it would be shorts and a, a sweater and, or a hoodie. And, and I'll explain that one later. We'll get into that next one. Undefeated, Go ahead, but, undefeated but you don't want to do MMA. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. I don't like to fight. I really don't. I yeah. don't like to fight. I'm not a violent person, but I know how to defend myself. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, we'll do this next question with uh, one's got to go. If you're familiar with that. Okay. No, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. So I'm not familiar, but well, I understand. So what you're, I, 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 I'm gonna please. give you. I'm gonna give you three names, and one's got to okay. go. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Batman, Iron Man, and Boba Fett. If one had to go, who's gone? Golly. Oh my God. I, I just go ahead and say Iron Man. You got to have Boba Fett. And you got to have Batman. Batman is the bomb. That's... And you got to have Boba Fett because I love Star Wars. And yes. Iron Man, eh, just yeah. <laughs> he's, he's out. That's, I'm sorry. That's, there's no wrong or right answers, but that is the right answer. <laughs> Batman is the man. And Boba Fett, that... you just can't go wrong. You know? That's awesome. That goes back to the whole uh, Star Wars versus Marvel. I mean, but before this whole MCU thing, I mean, who really knew who Iron Man was besides the hardcore uh, comic guys? Yeah. All right. Um, all right, this next question. Uh, what scares you the most? Are you asking me or you yeah. got questions? No, that? just... What scares me the most? Oh... Uh... I haven't been scared in a long time. Um, my dog dying. That's what scared mm. me. Um, but other than that, believe it or not, I got ghosts that don't live here in the house. We've, I've been followed by ghosts since I was about four or five years old all my life. And my daughter, my wife's starting to believe. She started believing about 15 years ago. And, and my daughter, the one that works with me here, uh, she's been getting bothered a lot. Wow. So, and so the only thing that scares me is something's going to happen to them. That's it. You know, that's nothing ever happens to me because I know how to handle it. And then you work with the dead. I mean, they're bound to, yeah. they're bound to follow you. Well, no, cause I don't sense, them. you don't mm. sense them. There. Uh, I, I got to, I'm real sensitive to that, but you don't, there's places that you go and I just kind of like, and, and I'm like a medium, but I never use that gift. I never understood it. I just can sense it. It's like when you go to a house, an you know, old house, and you go, oh, somebody was here. And, and mm. I told this one lady who never told anybody because she didn't want anybody to know. It's, I'm going to go really quick because I know you got yeah. other questions. But real quick is she's a, 
she's a teacher, a friend of mine, and um, I went into her house and we we're, we're going to go do, she was needing for me to go help her son do something. And her son was uh, just got finished moving to college. And, and I said, yeah, I'll go help you move. So I went to her house to go pick her up. And I walked in her house and they've been in and I go, oh, the woman died in here in this room. And she just looked at me and I said, yeah, and there's another one that was that drowned in the bathroom, her son. And she ended up shooting herself because she found out her son drowned. Wow. And so she goes, how did you know? I said, I, I just sense it. You know, I just know. And she goes, uh, I've never told yeah. anybody that. And so I said, yeah, yeah, I just sense it. I'm like that. So the sixth crazy. sense. Kind of. I don't, I, I've only seen five ghosts live, just like me and you, like we're looking, like I'm looking at you. Really? It's just, yeah, oh yeah. It's, it's a trip. We'll get into that later. That's another story. Man, you got to keep going. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, writing good. all this down. Ghost, Disney, the client. Yeah, the client. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. A lot more stuff. Um, you know, and, and that's going to do it. I mean, the last thing I just want you, um, to let everybody know where they can find you, um, all your social media, or I guess whether you prefer you. I don't you add anybody. I don't add anybody else to my Facebook because uh, I used to have. A, I'm just I, talking I, about people. Uh, if they pe- they want to start following you. Um, yeah, they can. They can follow me on TikTok, man. That's, TikTok. That's that's, that's, that's your number one. Yes, and Wolf is yeah. The Wolf. The, my my username. Wolf you US eighty eight. Yeah. Yes, right. sir. Well, Chris, like I said, it, it's been. I've enjoyed your stories. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I was going to be on here at six o'clock, man, but I was still on the road, man. So I apologize. I was oh, like, no. oh, I mean, right now, you know, I've been kind of busy. I haven't even put out a show in a while. So, I mean, it's, I started off trying to do a weekly thing, but then it's like whenever I get a chance, but, uh, yeah. but again, I, I really, I really appreciate your time and I would love to have you on again. Um, now, do you have other people listening in? You do that sometimes. Um, I haven't done anything live um, before, but um, <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, this recording, uh, I'll edit it, put an intro and, and outro, put a little theme music, and then uh, that gets put out. And you know, I have people that they listen. And like I said, you also get okay, get exposure on on the other network that that my show runs on as well. So, thank you, man. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. But, like I said, but, I had, yeah, man, anytime you want you to send me an email, uh, I don't give out my phone, but if you need my phone, it's better. It's way, 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 way better to contact me. I, uh, I don't mind giving yeah, it. When we're playing the uh, email tag, I, I wanted to give you my number just to make it easy. But um, yeah, but please just don't give mine out because I try to live a private life. You know, I no, understandably, and, uh, and understandably. I, I did have I did have four people who stalked me before. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, we'll talk about that I, later. I need, I need no, stocking. I need a stock stalkers. I need to add that to the list. Oh, but I, uh, um, I had, I had a woman and, and three guys stalking me, man, trying to locate me because they wanted just to meet me. You know, I'm like, oh, God, I'm not anybody special. I need a lock. Man. I need a lock of your hair and this, all this stuff. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It, it was weird, yeah. man. I don't know. Wanted to put lotion on me, that kind of stuff. Like, uh, <laughs> Bill. I don't know, man. I'm um, just saying. <laughs> it began, but, but again, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. You're an awesome artist. I'm sure you hear it all the time. Um, yeah. I hope you stay humble. I know you will. I, I don't think. I don't think I am. I, I'm. 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 I'm average. I always think <laughs> I'm just. Average. I really do, man. It's just. Um. Really do. One thing I, I forgot to ask you, just real quick. Do you do uh, anything digital? I mean, I know you do. Um... Uh, no, I tried it. I did have a Wacom machine. I uh, ended up buying one. Oh, there's your daughter waving hi. <laughs> She's waving hi. Yeah. That, that's why. That's my cue to, to get out of here. But uh, okay. all right, we'll, we'll save that for, for next time too. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, no, but no, no, just real quick so you'll, you'll understand. I tried it. I don't like it. I just think everybody else can do it. Everybody, it's just something very, very simple. It's kind of like a toy that you have on your phone. It's like a game. You can any once you play it, everybody can do it. Does it make sense? Yeah. So I, it's too simple for me. If that makes, I like old school. So yeah. But we'll get into that. Awesome. And send me uh, here. Write this down. Here's my here's my phone, so you can contact me. Just don't give out my phone. Yeah, man. I'll contact you, or you contact me, and we we'll go from there, man. 
All right. Appreciate your time and you have a good night, sir. You do the same. Thank you again All right. for doing. All right. You have a good night. You've been listening to the Dork Dad Podcast. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and leave a review. Until next time, we'll see you later.